Today I'm going to talk about IPL and laser light energy and how they uh, traverse or progress through the skin. So when we fire an IPL flash lamp, we will generate uh, quite a lar large range of uh, wavelengths from about 350 up to about 1200 nanometers. So this includes uh, ultraviolet, visible and near infrared light energy, as you can see here. Now we don't necessarily want all that energy when we're treating targets in the skin. So with an IPL, we'll put in a filter, maybe something like this at 600 nanometers, and that'll block all the light energy below 600 nanometers and only allow through the red and near infrared energy between 600 and about 1200. So in this way, we can target specific chromophores in the skin, for example, melanin. Um, and using this kind of light, the red and infrared, we know we can target those quite safely without damaging blood vessels in the uh, hemoglobin in the blood vessels. So I took that, um, that output, that was, that was from a, a spectroscopic analysis of um, some flash lamps. And I digitized it like this to basically generate this, uh, this chart. This is the relative intensities of all the different uh, wave bands from about 350 to 1200. So by doing this, we can calculate how much energy is in each of these regions of this uh, output, which is quite useful to have. So if we have, um, for example, um, IPL going into the skin like this, then the blue light will, as soon as, soon as the blue light hits the skin, it will uh, encounter some atoms and molecules and will scatter. And the scattering causes the beam to spread like this, as you can see. Um, this is mostly down to anisotropy. Uh, anisotropy is a measure of how widely a beam can be scattered. Blue light is scattered very widely. As a result, the uh, penetration depth is only about 0.6 millimeters. This is the depth at which the um, incident um, energy drops to about 37% of its original um, energy. And this uh, blue light constitutes about 14% of all the IPL light that's fired. This, this is an unfiltered IPL um, output. The green light will spread like this. This anisotropy is uh, not quite as bad as the blue light, so it doesn't spread out quite so widely. And it will penetrate to about 1.1 millimeters depth. And the green light constitutes about 13% of all the IPL energy. Yellow penetrates down to about 1.6 millimeters, but there's only about 4% of this um, energy in the blue, sorry, in the yellow uh, band. It's, it's uh, not, not a, a large um, bandwidth at all for, for yellow. And then the red and orange colors, they, they'll penetrate to about 2.6 millimeters, um, and they constitute about 17% of all the energy. And then finally, we've got the infrared energy, which will go down through easily down to 10 millimeters uh, or, or greater. And this is uh, this constitutes about 52%, more than half of all the IPL energy is in the near infrared um, section between 700 and 1200 nanometers. So, and we can see here that the, the infrared and the red, they have the highest values of anisotropy. So they penetrate deeper into the skin than the, the blue, the green and the yellow light. The, those lower wavelengths will always spread out wider compared to red and infrared. So how does that compare with um, laser energy? Well, la laser light obviously is just one wavelength. Um, that's what, uh, that's what uh, lasers are good at, making a single wavelength. Um, so all the energy is contained within that uh, wavelength. The Alex Alexandrite laser it will penetrate to about 3.1 millimeters. Diodes at um, 808, 810 uh, nanometers, they'll, they'll penetrate down to about 3.8 millimeters. And the YAG uh, 1064, again, similar to um, the 1200 with the um, uh, IPL, it can go down to n nearly 10 millimeters deep. That's, that's, uh, that's quite deep. Um, and again, these are the, um, the one over E depths at 37%. Depths, so you can see that um, the, the light penetrates um, 
really the, the depth of penetration is is due to its um, anisotropy and how widely it spreads out. If the anisotropy is is wide, then it can't get too deep into the skin. If it's more, as we call forward scattering um, anisotropy, then it can penetrate much more deeply. And the red and infrared lights can do this. So how does this um, how does this uh, manifest itself? in melanin well this is the the melanin absorption curve from 350 to 1200 nanometers and we can see that uh, down at the the low end the 350 400 nanometers part of the spectrum um, the absorption is pretty high whereas when you get out to the far or <laughs> not quite far the near infrared out to about 1200 nanometers um, the absorption is very low down there so um, th this obviously has an effect on the um, on the temperatures that are going to be created. The the blue light, it's going to be like I said, it's about fourteen percent of all the, the light is is uh, blue. The green is about thirteen percent. Yellow light is only four percent in that part. Red light is uh, seventeen percent, and then infrared, like I said, it's more than half of it is um, is infrared so how this translates into temperature rises when you fire um, this light into the skin what's going to happen well if we fired one joule per square centimeter of unfiltered ipl light then the blue light will raise the temperature around about 22.6 degrees celsius or thereabouts the green light will only raise it by about 11 degrees that's about half of the the blue light contribution even though the percentages of the energy is about the same but it's because the green light is not so strongly absorbed compared to the blue light blue light is very strongly absorbed in, in melanin the yellow light a little bit less is only four percent of the energy is yellow so it doesn't con contribute very much to the temperature only about 2.2 degrees the red light red and orange well we've got 70 percent of all the energy is in that in those uh, wavelengths but they only contribute about seven and a half degrees of uh, temperature because the, by, by this point, with these wavelengths, the um, melanin absorption is pretty low. And then all that infrared energy, which is more than half of the total energy, only contributes about nine degrees Celsius. Um, so the infrared doesn't do an awful lot, a little bit more than the red, but not much. So what this is showing is, is that as the wavelengths um, increase in length, we're going out towards the, the red and infrared, the absorption in melanin reduces significantly and therefore the temperature rises also reduce. That's just the, the physics, I'm afraid, but uh, c'est la vie. So how do these compare? Well, for a one joule per square centimetre fluence into melanin, if we used a, a 600 nanometer filter, on an IPL system, then the instantaneous temperature rise would be about uh, 23.6 degrees Celsius. Uh, now this is assuming that there's no heat losses during the pulse, um, as described before. So we're talking about a extremely short pulse, uh, approximately zero milliseconds or thereabouts. Um, a 530 filter, which is typically used for blood vessels, etc. Um, this will generate a temperature of around 36.7 degrees Celsius, while the lower 480 filter, which is usually used for acne and pigmentation, will generate 52 degrees Celsius. Now, these are all for um, a fluence of one joule per square centimeter. We're not changing that at all. All we're doing is we're changing the filters, and in doing so, as the, as the, the filter value decreases, the amount of energy getting through to the skin increases purely as a consequence of changing the filter. For lasers, if we look at the Alexandrite laser at 755 nanometers, uh, one joule per square centimeter in melanin will generate a 47 degree um, increase in temperature, which is quite high. And the reason for that is that the, uh, the melanin absorbs pretty strongly at 755 nanometers. For a diode laser at uh, 808 or 810 nanometers, uh, the absorption is not so strong there, so temperature rise is about 36 degrees centigrade, which is equivalent to the IPL using the 530 filters, very similar to that. And then the NDIAG laser at uh, 1064, well, it'll only generate about 14 degrees Celsius because the absorption um, 
by melanin at that wavelength is so low. So this is why NDI glazes need to use high fluorescence to achieve any kind of results. So I thought I'd just have a look at uh, these uh, depths of penetration for the different wavelengths um, that we did just previously. So um, like I said, blue light only goes to about 0.6 millimeters, green light at 550 nanometers only goes to 1.1, Yellow at 585 nanometers goes to 1.6 millimeters deep, and then visible red light at 700 nanometers will go down to 2.6 millimeters. Now, in this particular scenario, I have drawn these to, to scale as, as best I can. Previous picture was not to scale. I wanted to see what was the difference between the different wavelengths from uh, IPL. So an 800 nanometer wavelength, which is infrared, so it's invisible, will go down to 3.8 millimeters. 900 also infrared goes down to 4.8, a thousand nanometers reaches uh, 6.8 millimeters deep into the skin, and 1100 nanometers will reach as far as 10.5 millimeters. I don't think there's any actual dermis that's that thick, but um, theoretically it could get that far. But interestingly, once we reach the 1200 nanometers, it doesn't penetrate nearly as far as about half the distance of the uh, 1100 nanometers. So it only penetrates about 5.2 millimetres into the skin. So we can see here that uh, all this infrared energy um, is penetrating quite deep into the skin. But like I said before, it's not very well absorbed, unfortunately. So it only has a relatively um, small effect on temperature rises. So that was a, a brief explanation uh, of um, IPLs and, and uh, lasers. Um, the, the, you know, all these technologies will fire light energy into the skin to, to various depths. Um, they will all, the energies will be, uh, wavelengths will be absorbed by something. It could be um, melanin, it could be blood, it could be tissue water. And will create um, temperature rises um, at various depths. The, the thing to note is that um, as the fluence uh, goes into the skin, um, it will create backscattering. Um, some of the photons just turn around and come back out of the skin. Um, and that uh, creates an interesting um, distribution of light in the skin. But I'm going to do that in a, another a talk at some point in the future. I hope this helps a little bit. Um, people seem to be confused quite a lot by IPLs and they make all sorts of strange claims which are not based in science. So hopefully this clears up some of that. Thanks for listening.